So in this part, we're going to look into all the mitigation that have been added into the Windows kernel. So what is a mitigation? A mitigation is basically a way to reduce the likelihood that the variability is exploited successfully. A mitigation can entirely close a bug class and make it not exploitable at all, or it can make it more difficult to exploit it. So let's look at the different mitigations that have been added into Windows over time. Let's get started. So NX is basically the idea that most memory that is writable won't be executable. It is implemented in the page tables that basically dictates whether or not you can write or execute. The idea is you can't just introduce shellcode into arbitrary locations in kernel memory and then just override a function pointer to jump there. The idea is you have to at least bypass non-executable memory protection somehow first, be it return-oriented programming technique like wrap or manipulating page tables, for instance. So NX was present in most places into the Windows kernel, but not in the non-page pool initially. So if through some kernel kind of variability you could leak the address of a non-page pool chunk with data you control, you could store a shellcode there and then find a way to jump into that chunk to execute the shellcode from there. But since Windows 8, you can't do that anymore because NX is also enabled for the non-page pool. Most things in the Windows kernel memory space are randomized now since Windows Vista. So you're almost always looking for memory disclosure vulnerabilities or figuring out ways to create them. A lot of the time for local privilege escalations, unless you are in a sandbox and you have uh, limited access to system calls, you can almost always leak kernel addresses because the default state that a process runs in, you can leak all sorts of stuff. It is only when you are in a low integrity level, typically in a sandbox, that the Windows 32K syscall filtering is in place, that your capability to leak kernel addresses is significantly reduced. In general, until recently, at least, kernel ASLR has been mostly in place to prevent remote exploitation, but it hasn't been used for real local privilege escalation mitigation. The main exceptions to everything being randomized in the Windows kernel were the HAL, like the hardware abstraction layer, but that's been randomized in Windows 10 1703. And similarly, the page tables themselves were not randomized either in the past. And there was a trick if you had an arbitrary write primitive, you could just modify the page tables themselves by knowing exactly where they are and bypass things like SMAP. But that has also been fixed in the recent Windows 10 1703. In the past, you could allocate the null page, and that is now prevented by allocating in when a new process starts, so you can't do it anymore. And that has been present since Windows 8. This basically killed the entire null difference bug class. SMEP stands for Supervisor Mode Execution Protection, and the idea is that it prevents kernel mode to execute userland pages, and it is enforced through the page tables. The idea is that if you get code execution into the kernel somehow, you won't be able to redirect execution to your own userland allocations. This has been present since Windows 8. We mentioned the object manager and that every object that is tracked by the object manager has its own object header, which is prefixed in front of the structure specific to the object type, like an e-thread or e-process. And one of the fields of the object header is the type, which basically dictates the type of the object. And so there is a global table in the kernel that is indexed based on this type index. And it used to be that if you could override the type field of a given object header in one of the pools, then when it did the lookup, you would end up being able to force the kernel to access userland memory and then execute a function pointer that is controlled in userland. They introduced field encoding. So now you need to be able to leak the cookie in order to know the layout of the object, in order to manipulate its data if you want to still use that technique, which means in practice, this technique can't be used anymore. Here we just link a couple of papers if you want more information on this. Something else that used to be a really common exploitation technique was to abuse unlinking operations in doubly linked list in the kernel. So in the old days, when you're doing heap exploitation stuff, if you could control the forward and backward pointers, you could often build a right primitive and effectively write some value you control to some location. And that was really, really common across lots of software and operation system. The exploitation technique relies on the fact that when an element is removed from a linked list, it accesses the forward and backward pointers. And the removal of the element 
triggers two write operations. So in the first write operation, it writes some data in the location. And in the second write operation, it writes the previously used location in the previously used data, if that makes sense. What this basi basically means is that there are some constraints in the write primitive where you can't just write anything you want anywhere in memory and that the value you want to write needs to be a valid address in the first place. So when the other write happens, it doesn't crash. And so that's why usually we like to call this kind of primitive like a mirror write primitive because there are two writes in mirror, even though lots of people don't actually use that term. So this mirror write primitive has been mitigated now by using what we call safe unlinking, which just makes sure that for a given entry being unlinked from the list, that both of its pointers point back to the entry through their adjacent entries and their pointers. And so if that is not the case, it won't unlink the entry and just trigger a BSOD. So you won't be able to abuse the unlink operation. And so this was introduced in the link list of the pool allocator in Windows 7. And then on, on Windows 8, it was added in like every linked list everywhere into the Windows kernel because most linked list functionality is, is actually using a standard API in the Windows kernel. So they were able to basically kill the primitive across the entire kernel. So what was introduced recently in Windows 10 to prevent speculative execution kind of bugs is that kernel virtual address shadow mitigation shortened to KVA shadow. And so the basic idea is that there are different page tables for user mode and kernel mode. And so when you do a syscall like NT open file on that diagram, you'll be running in user mode. And so you'll be trapping into a kernel mode. And so your process would have a limited set of page tables related to your user mode. So you won't be able to do any side channel attacks through speculative execution. And then in the kernel, it will swap to using the kernel mode page tables so it can do kernel stuff. And finally, before it returns to user mode, it will restore the user mode page table so you won't be able to access the kernel mode page tables before returning to user mode. So SMAP. SMAP is actually a mitigation that is not in Windows yet, but that will really make it a, a lot harder to exploit vulnerabilities in general if it ends up being added. And so the SMAP mitigation has been on other operating system like Linux or Android for some times now, and they call it PAN on ARM Android. The idea is very similar to SMAP with like an E instead of the A in SMAP. But for SMAP, basically you're trying to um, prevent kernel mode to read or write any user on pages, whereas with SMAP, we are trying to prevent kernel mode to execute user learn pages. And so the fact that there is no SMAP in Windows at the moment means we can basically trick the kernel code to read or write pointers or structures that are not effectively in kernel, but that are in user learn. And the way we do that is we, we create the structures in, in user learn, and then using memory corruption vulnerabilities, we corrupt some pointers to point them to our fake user learn structures. And then basically the kernel will access our user learn structures and potentially we can do bad things. Like we can make the kernel access our structures in order to do bad stuff. If Windows had SMAP enabled, basically any of these accesses to user learn would fail. And so the way you would end up having to exploit the vulnerabilities would be introduce all of the data into the kernel somehow and figure out where the data you introduced exists in kernel memory, and then finally point to that kernel region instead of using the user learn structures. And so that is significantly more difficult. Microsoft did partially add support for SMAP for certain code path, like in 1903, for instance, but a lot of code still don't have it enabled. So there was a trick to disable SMAP based on the fact that page tables were always at a non-randomized address and on the fact that a static index was used for page table set reference. And basically the idea was that there used to be this static index into the page table themselves that would reference an entry that allowed you to reference the page table themselves. 
And so basically you would have a static virtual address in the kernel that points to the page table itself. And that would let you modify the page table through an arbitrary write primitive. And so you could disable SMAP in the page table. And so now basically the index of this self-referenced entry is randomized at boots. So you can't use that trick anymore.